Welcome to Tech Presence with Amir. In this video, we are going to learn about uh, condition split to transformation in mapping data flow in Azure Data Factory. In last video, I show you how condition split work, and uh, we uh, have uh, divided our input stream into multiple outputs and wrote that data to the different tables. Uh, but a uh, couple of things I missed in that one. Uh, there was one uh, split on first matching condition. Uh, so we used that one in last video, where uh, when so the f uh, data uh, that uh, satisfies this condition and then it goes to the first matching condition and it, uh, just go into one stream now all matching conditions that uh, it means uh, wherever it will match uh, it will go in that as well so the same data can go in multiple outputs uh, if uh, we use this one and uh, in the first matching condition uh, if uh, the data match for first one it will go right there so we will experiment and we will see how exactly these both can uh, features of work uh, let's go ahead and perform this demo and learn about it now we are here in blob storage and uh, in my blob storage i have a container and uh, in the container we have a file called total csv total sales csv file so i have id and the ids are one from 12 so we are going to divide our data according to the IDs. So first three IDs will go to one stream, output stream. Then from three to six, they should be going to another one. And then remaining will go to the next one. That's what we are going to do. So let's go ahead and take a look right there. Here I'm in Azure Data Factory and my data flow is, I have enabled data flow debugger. So cluster is being generated. So it's right now it's just building our cluster. But we can go ahead and start working now in the data flow i'm going to select a source and then uh, go to the data set uh, and uh, go to the azure blob storage and here i will be select my csv file now i will be creating a new linked service and here i will be choosing my subscription and then uh, i will be choosing my storage now hit create uh, navigate to the file so that's in the input container and the file name is called total sale.csv uh, let it uh, get the schema from the file and it has a first uh, row as a header that's true as well. Now we can uh, just uh, right come here and preview our data. And we can see that it is getting all the data what we have in the CSV file. So we have ID 1 to 12 right there. Now we are going to bring a condition split here. And uh, once we bring the condition split, it's going to show us uh, these two um, graphical uh, parts of it so it is uh, telling us this is going to be your uh, condition split part this is uh, the default so that you can use already these ones uh, now here uh, uh, let's do one thing so we will say less than three id less than three that's what i'm saying so i want to create uh, uh, a flow or output stream of where less than three uh, id less than three so id less than three record should go right there and here i can go and then uh, click on condition and id less than three and uh, we can put the lesson or equal to three okay so that should do it and then now we see that uh, uh, it is telling us like id is string and uh, you are implementing to the integer uh, expression so what happened here we go to source here and go to source setting go to the projection and here id is uh, um, it uh, found out like oh it is a string so it uh, uh, just decided by itself uh, so we are going to do we are going to change to the integer as we know that it's a number now you come back to the condition splitter the the error has gone so now first condition what we created here we are saying any records uh, where id is less than three or equal to three that should go in this one and then we can uh, output to the wherever we want to write to the maybe table or somewhere now we can go and add another condition and here in i'm um, saying id greater than three okay so you see right there id and i said greater than three now if we can add another one where we'll say id greater than six now id greater than six here okay now this is the last one and i will say remaining uh, ids or whatever okay now look at here we have this selected first matching condition now when, what's going to happen in the as we have id less than three these ids will show up right there in the first one now uh, the rest of the ids they are greater than three so then what happen if we have selected first matching condition all those ids will go to this bucket 
So then uh, id is greater than uh, 6, uh, that will not even, uh, there would be no record because uh, we are saying first matching condition and our records are matching with this one. So we have all ids which are greater than 3, they will go to in this bucket, then it is not going to go to this at all because you have selected first matching condition. And there will be no remaining ids as well. Let's preview the data and so we can see that how exactly it's going to behave. So less than three, if I remember, uh, we have less than three records so, or equal to three, so one, two, three, that comes right there. And now our second condition was ID is greater than three. And uh, if I refresh that, that, that data, it's gonna take all the data, which is greater than three and go all the way to 12. So you see that uh, we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and, and 11 and 12 right there. Now, if I go to the next one, uh, there will be no record because we are saying, uh, if you are matching with the first, uh, just uh, go in that bucket. Now, if I will say greater than six, uh, there would be no data here. So you can see that there is no output. Also, there will be no output uh, in the remaining IDs because the first two conditions less than three and also greater than three has fulfilled all the requirement for our data. So that's uh, way, that's why our data has been divided into two buckets, so less than three and greater than three. So that's where uh, we are all good. Now we go to back to the condition split. And here, when you are saying uh, all matching conditions, so this condition, we are going to get uh, the records uh, where ID is less than uh, 3 and equal to 3. So that's fine. Then uh, the records are going to go be like go to the next bucket where uh, greater than 3. So you're going to get like 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, um, and uh, 10, 11, 12. That will be fine. Then uh, even uh, the uh, those all records uh, are here and uh, they satisfy here. But as you have selected all matching conditions, now in the next one, what's going to happen? Uh, all those records uh, which uh, were actually here, seven, eight, nine, and ten, were here as well. They will be going in this bucket as well because this condition is also true. And you are saying all matching conditions. So uh, and then whatever the remaining, if uh, that uh, satisfies it, it will go right there. So let's go and uh, preview the data now with the all matching conditions. So in the first matching condition, you have seen that. Uh, um, it uh, once the records are matched with one condition, they will be just in that bucket. It will not go to the next bucket. But all matching condition, they can be in multiple buckets or outputs. So that's what is happening here. So here we can see that the first condition uh, ID is less than three, and uh, it uh, satisfies one, two, three, and uh, all the records are there. Now let's go to the second one. ID is greater than three, so it's going to take the records from uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So you can see right there any IDs uh, which are greater than three, they are showing it. Uh, now in the previous when we said the only first matching, uh, then uh, it did not show anything in the IDs greater than six, uh, but in all matching. As we are here now, all matching, it is going to show us uh, the records uh, for the IDs greater than 6 as well. So you can see that right there. So that's the difference between uh, first matching and all matching. Uh, so you, you you understand now with the visual how it is working. One thing, honestly, I could not understand as of now by myself, uh, even in the all matching, uh, uh, see right there, uh, this uh, from uh, this is shown all the records, uh, the remaining IDs. Uh, so that's uh, I'm not really understanding uh, as of now. Maybe there is something I'm missing because I'm reading over and over this. It says rows that do not meet any condition will uh, use uh, this output stream. So uh, that kind of make me confused because all these rows uh, they are part of this one. They are part of this one. They are part of uh, some of them are part of this one. So they all are matching uh, here somewhere. Uh, you know, uh, at least with one. Uh, you know. Uh, and actually they are matching multiple here because we are seeing all matching conditions uh, but here if you are using all matching then the last one is showing you pretty much all the records what you have so that's uh, if you guys understand a little better uh, this english and uh, uh, learn something from experiments different than me please share so i can learn uh, uh, from you guys as well so thank you very much and i hope uh, this uh, explain the detail of where you need to use first matching condition that uh, if you want to once uh, first matching condition you will be using uh, if you want to put that records in one bucket right there and once they're done uh, you don't want to put in any one even the condition meter uh, but if you want to uh, match with multiple conditions uh, that's where you will say okay all matching conditions uh, thank you very much for watching please subscribe my channel and obviously i will see you guys in the next video